Hello everyone! This is Polish the Fashion Workshop. I remind you that we post new videos every day. Today I'm going to start sewing a dress for Kate. Do you remember her? We've already made one dress for her. It was made of the dark blue jacket fabric. I promised you to make one more dress for Kate. This is going to be a light summer dress. Let's have a look at this sketch. We offered her making garments of the more complicated designs, but she liked this one. She wants the dress to be pretty close fitting. There is going to be a seam on the waistline. The neckline isn't deep and it's edged with a flounce. The flounce should be flared. I'm going to show you how to do it. It should be made of a beautiful round shape. These edge should be absolutely perfect. There will be one more flounce attached to the bottom. It will be straight. There will be no waist tucks in the skirt, just in the bodice. The skirt will be flared. The technique for making flared skirts without tucks in them is very useful. As I've already said, the flounce which will be attached to the flared skirt will be straight. The length of the skirt will be 52 cm, 32 cm for the main detail and 20 cm for the flounce. The length of the flounce at the neckline is also 20 cm. I'm going to add 2 extra cm to the skirt. I'll be able to cut this extension after a fitting if it's not needed. There is no need to take any measurements. This is Kate's basic pattern. We know for sure that it's accurate. This is how the basic pattern looks like now. It was made longer. I remind you that there will be no tucks in the skirt. The opening will be moved to the flare. I'm going to show you how to do it. Next, I'm going to show you the fabric I'll be working with. After that, we'll move on to working with the pattern. The design is pretty interesting. I think that it will be useful for you to learn how to make such flounces. I'm going to show you how to cut both the main fabric and the lining. Let's have a look at the fabrics. This one is a cutwork embroidery of a Spanish producer. Have a close look at the fabric. Each hole is perfect. The fabric is very popular among the customers of my fashion house. We have it in two colors, white and black. The best thing about this fabric is that it can be washed in a washing machine. This is 100% natural cotton, so the fabric doesn't shrink. You won't damage the fabric by washing it. Of course, you shouldn't wash it in the boiling water. Delicate mode would be perfect. Notice that the dots are placed horizontally. For them to be placed horizontally in the dress, the fabric should be cut not only lengthwise, but on the crosswise grain. Otherwise, the dress wouldn't look good. If you decide to make dresses of the similar fabrics, cut them on the crosswise grain. This is very important. I want the dots to be placed horizontally in the dress, just like they are in the roll. I know that many people don't like fabrics with the cutwork embroidery because they don't know how to line them. Have a look at the fabric we are going to use for the lining. This is a piece of the very light cambric fabric. These are the lining and the main fabric. This is how they are going to look like together. We've already showed you several garments made of this fabric. As I've already said, it's very popular among the customers of my fashion house. Fabrics with the cutwork embroidery are always very beautiful. Don't be afraid of working with them. Let's get back to the pattern. I've already cut and decadized the fabric. That means that I've steamed 
and iron them. I've cut 1.6 meters of the cutwork embroidery fabric and 1.4 meters of cambric. I can move the fabrics aside to have a look at the pattern. This is Kate's basic pattern. I need to cut it. I'm going to show you how to make the flounces. Do you remember the first dress we made for Kate? It was a dark blue dress of dark art. We've showed you its making and review of it. We're going to show you a review of this dress when it's ready as well. We know for sure that this basic pattern is perfect, so we can sew garments in its bases without any doubts. The waist tags should be cut. It should be done for me to work with the pattern more conveniently. When it's done, I'll sign the center front and the center back in the details. I remind you that there will be a seam on the waistline. I need to make sure that the center front and the center back are signed both in the upper and the lower details. Guys, gone are the days when it took us long to make patterns. Having a perfect basic pattern, you can sew anything you want without any problems. What should we do with the chest darts? I'm planning to move them to the neckline. I'll do it after changing the neckline. Next, I need to use a marker pen for signing the details. As I've already said, the details will be cut on the waistline, so both the upper and the lower details should be signed. The center front, a fold, the center back, a seam, You know the way I usually work. I like moving the chest darts to the center front when working with the necklines and the shoulders. I could have just moved it right to the neckline, but it wouldn't be convenient to change the neckline in this case. This is where I've moved the chest darts. It's just a temporary position. It will be much more convenient to work with the neckline now. I need to close the original dart opening with a sticky tape. I'll be working with the neckline first. I want to make the neckline 5 or even 5.5 cm wider. Have a look here. I've just moved this point 5.5 cm further from the neckline. Be very attentive, watch what I'm doing and don't make mistakes. 
Kate doesn't like deep necklines, so I'm going to make this one 10 cm deeper. The neckline should be round, I'm drawing it by hands. The neckline should be beautiful. This piece can be thrown away. Let's have a look at the back neckline next. It should also be made 5.5 cm wider and a bit deeper. The back neckline should be round as well. You might decide to make the necklines deeper the front one, or the back one, or even both. Kate doesn't like garments with deep necklines. A customer's wish is a rule for me. Next, I need to make sure that the shoulders are even. They are not. One is a couple of millimeters wider than the other. It's actually okay, because I'm going to change the shoulders next. I want them to be not more than 5 cm wide, so I'll make them tighter. This is how it should be done. I remind you that when changing the armholes, you shouldn't alter the lower parts, just the sides. Same thing here. Next I need to cut the extra details and throw them away. Have a look at what we got. This is where the chest dart is now. It should be moved to the neckline. Close the opening on the center front in order to do it. This is not an opening for a gather. This is the chest dart moved to the front neckline. It will be hidden under the flounce. The upper parts of the pattern are ready. Let's have a look at the lower parts. Please be very attentive. I remind you that I've signed the lower parts of the details. I want to measure the neckline and write the measurement down. I need to find the measuring tape. The neckline should be measured in order for me to be able to make a flounce. 14.5 cm on the back neckline, 21.5 cm on the front neckline. That makes 36 cm in total. This is one half of the full neckline measurement. I'll write it down. One half of the measurement is 36 cm. So the full measurement is 72 cm. That's it. The upper part of the pattern is ready. Next time we're going to show you how to make a pattern for a lower part of the dress. I'm also going to show you how to make a pattern for a flounce. That's all for today. My name is Pauk Stirina. Subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Goodbye.